Hi everyone, uh, my name is Ashley Cormier and I work in, the doctor, in Dr. Borland's lab here at the University of Guelph. As of currently, our lab is working on the antimicrobial resistance and virulence among avian pathogenic E. coli from Quebec. Um, what we have so nicely depicted up here for you right now is a picture of a chick that has become infected with avian pathogenic E. coli and it has resulted in cholibacillosis. Now, in Quebec, spectidomycin is the primary, primarily the antibiotic used for the treatment and, sorry, primarily used for the prevention of avian cholibacillosis in Quebec. Um, and this is because gentamicin is no longer available for this purpose anymore. Now, interesting enough, even though gentamicin is no longer used, we do see an increase in the resistance in the population. What's even more concerning is that we see an increase in septiophore resistance along the same trend line. And the big question is to why this might be happening. So what we want to do is to, to assess to see if the use of spectinomycin could be explaining the increase in gentamicin and septi-4 resistance in the APEC population. Then we wanted to take this one step further and to assess to see if the use of spectinomycin could select for more virulent APEC strains. And this is because in the past we have seen that the use of, use of antibiotics has selected for virulence factors. And our approach to this was to screen a collection of APEC isolates for antimicrobial resistance and virulence genes, and then we wanted to look to see if there was associations between these genes. So how exactly did we do this? Our collaborators at MAPPAC in Quebec, which is the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, and Foodstuff in Quebec, isolated 585 E. coli isolates for us, and they obtained these from chickens suffering from cholibacillosis between the years of 2009 and 2013. We then used a multiplex PCR to screen for a variety of virulence factors and antimicrobial resistant determinants. And then as for our statistics, we used a pairwise association between the genes. So to just before I move on any further, um, I just want to point out that what, as if I mention the gene AADA, I'm talking about a gene that encodes spectinomycin resistance. So the graph I have up here for you is a comparison of gentamicin susceptibility <coughs> and the resistance genes. What we really wanted to point out here was that for the isolates that, we were found, that were found to be intermediate or resistant towards gentinomycin, the vast majority of them carried the gene AAC36. And then those isolates that were found to be susceptible to gentamicin, well, barely any of them carried this gene. This graph is quite similar to the one before, but for septiophore, so septiophore susceptibility and the resistant genes. Um, what we found was that the isolates that carried int that were intermediate or resistant towards uh, septiophore, septiophore um, the primary, almost all of them carried the gene CMY, and then those that were susceptible to septiophore, well, barely any of them carried CMY. Now, what we have right here is um, our virulence detection. So what we wanted to point out here was that we found a variety of virulence factors in these isolates. There was many different combinations in each isolate. Um, we also found that uh, what these genes did also varied, too. Um, this just really brought home the fact to us that uh, st every strain of um, APEC is very variable within each other, between each other. So here we look at the association of AADA with other genes, so our resistance to spectinomycin. Um, what we found was that the gene AAC36 that we f found uh, with the gentamicin resistance had a very strong positive association with AADA. So what we did here is we took uh, plasmids that had the AAC36 uh, gene and we put them into a completely new cell. What we had found is that all those that um, were successful trans transfers all carried the gene AADA as well. Now looking back at our other associations, we did find that there was a strong negative association between CMY and AADA, and then there was also a few other negative associations between AADA and our virulence factors. So what does this all mean? Uh, first off, spectinomycin is likely co-selecting for gentamicin resistant in APAC in Quebec. Uh, second off, spectinomycin use is probably not the reason for the increase in septi resistance. Um, in 2014, there was a ban of, of the use of septia 4 in Quebec, so this will likely to help bring down the resistance. Um, and last but not least, the use of spectinomycin is unlikely to select for more virulent strains of APAC, which is obviously good news for the industry. Um, thank you for listening, and if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them.